Like if you're competent in stand up, you feel like somewhere at the Laugh Factory isn't even. What's the word? Uh, you, like you, you, you reach a point where there are mics that are can, that can be like a waste of time for you. Like half of them are a waste of time for anybody. Like if you're starting out. If you're if you're starting out, then like, okay, yeah, you just gotta get up. But like, if you're like five, it's six years. Day. If you're like five, six years in, then like, you ain't get shit done performing for like the same of as you saw at the last mic. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just a cycle. So it's like, I'm getting more done. It, it it's becoming more of a hey, should you be really like you know just going out to mics or should you? Sit your ass down, actually write the shit, not running premises off your fucking phone all the time. Yeah. Sit down, hammer it out, develop a process, actually have an ending instead of just trailing off whenever you're done with your rant. And then you go to a mic worth going to to see if it works out. Because this is what mics for the audience. Hell, the main reason I keep going to Coles because it's like, there's people. The same reason. Like, yeah. there's an audience. I hate most of them, but it's an audience. <laughs> Wait, why do you? What, what is your disdain for the audience? I hate hipster. Like, I hate anyone that believes that they're. It, it's. Like, let me try to phrase this in like, at, in like you know, an actual phrase or whatever. Okay. It, it's the thing about being a progressive. Yeah. Like. Ultimately, it's the right thing to do, but people have a really shitty way of going about it. It's almost like I think the best comparison I could have is like, you know how I think if I go back, it was like 20. It was like 2014. Everyone started pretending that they never said no homo in high school. Mm. That kind of thing. It's it's a, like there's a lot of progressiveness. There's a lot of bullshit. It would be a lot better if the movement was about like, hey. We were all kind of fucking up, but now we're getting better together. But it's become like this witch hunt, like mm. acting like this and acting like this. Now you didn't get the memo. Fuck you, nigga. Kill, die, slow, <laughs> motherfucker. You're not invited to my party. I make the best buffalo cauliflower wings ever. You're not gonna eat them because you fucking up. So, so okay. So, like in my own words, basically, it's like it's like uh, you don't like virtue signaling. I that definitely. Yeah. I don't like virtue signaling. Okay, and you you want. You want their not a clean slate. Obviously, if you're raping people in the past, you should get in trouble for that. Absolutely. But like, like for saying, you know, saying shit that would be seen as inappropriate now uh, to be held accountable to a standard that was different. You know what I mean? Like the fact that we're looking at people's Twitter account. Like, oh, like timing is everything. Like, <laughs> oh God, we're already quoting Bill. Yeah, no, let's go, let's go, let's <laughs> nah, go. Because he bought up, he bought up like a decent point. Like it's gotten to the point where we're going after people. For saying shit back in like 1973, yeah. where there were no rules. Like if, like if someone won MVP in like in 1984, and then they changed the rules, they don't say, "Oh, based yeah. on this ruling, we 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 look back at this call at like Game Seven of like the NBA Finals or whatever." Like we retroactively take away your championship. That's not what you do. You go better. Going, you do better going forward. You know what I mean. I do, I do. Uh, do you feel like you've you've gotten um, called out? Is not the right word, but have 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 you? Do you think you've dealt with that at all? Like oh, people? Yeah, yeah. Oh shit! Okay. I, I don't. I haven't told you about that yet. I'm. I mean, if you want to tell me about I, it now, I, I got pseudo me too'd one time after it was between because I, I know I told you about um, how I tried to move to Chicago for the first time. Okay. Then you're from Detroit for the. For I'm the, from Michigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm from like southeast Michigan. I never like to spread the whole Detroit thing too far. Like okay. it's one thing of a comic shorthand says it. It's like, oh, he's from Detroit, like de- like Detroit area. Right, right. But like, you're not I, from the D. But, but like, but if like I'm on wax, I'm not gonna be like I'm from Detroit. Like no, I'm from Ypsilanti, Michigan. It's between, <laughs> it's between the title Chicago used to have. It's between the most dangerous city in the world. And like top five whitest city in the world, Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's right. right there in the middle. I frequented both. It was a thing. But like I I uh went out of Chicago, I fell for a bad sublease. It was phony. It was made on Microsoft Word. I really should have done better. And how old were you? Twenty before you judge me, I was twenty five. Okay. Yeah, twenty five. Yeah, you're allowed to fuck up like that in twenty five. Yeah. I was like really over eager. Hmm. It wasn't even comedy. I was just eager to get out. Like when you, when you're like fresh out of high school, I did. 
I kind of did the college. Thing. I went to class. I didn't do the whole dormitory thing. Like I found, I start. Well, I started college. I found my group of friends that would be one of my biggest influences on me creatively. Who? What was? What were they? Um, my best friend of this day, Matt, who's coming this week. Cool. Um, this dude named Patrick, whom he he's a jack of all trades. He's like the manager of a dispensary, but he's also like the president of operations at like a fucking recording studio or some shit. Um, Cheese, who's a cop. <laughs> What was it Jeeves? I said cheese. Cheese? Yes. You've heard the joke before. You heard that joke when uh, I have a friend that he's a state trooper. I call him Trooper Cheese. I don't remember anything anymore. Yeah, he, he, he's part. Of, he's part of like he's part of a thing I do. Like his name is legit Cheese. He's a state trooper, so Trooper Cheese. Okay, and, Trooper yeah. Cheese. Right. And um, a whole bunch of other like affiliates. Like I have a dude. It's, I have a friend. Uh, his name's Terrence. He has like dreads and shit, so I call him Black Fabio. <laughs> like this, this, this dude gets so much pussy. Like, we were having a heart-to-heart, and he meant it from the bottom of his heart. He was just like, dude, like, he was on the verge of tears is what I'm trying to illustrate. Like, I'm just so tired of all this meaningless sex. I don't know what to do, man. And, like, he came from the bottom of his heart. He was legit hurt. Yeah. And I'm trying to empathize, which I can't. <laughs> I'm trying. I got, yo. I'm, try, I'm just like, hey, man, you a good dude. You'll find a steady relationship someday. <laughs> even though at this moment, I hate you and I want you to like, die slow. Me, internally. <laughs> internally. Cause, and that's another thing. Like, it's a whole other thing to be prettier than you. This man has a better personality. He's nicer to people. He's always helping folks. He's like the Hey Arnold of... <laughs> A fucking real, you know, Arnold was always going like help people yeah, and shit. Yeah. That's what Terrence does on a regular basis. Just hand something helpful. I got <laughs> and I, like the only reason the only reason why he ever breaks up with anybody half the time is because the girls he dates think he's too good to be true. <laughs> and they really? think and they think he, like he's low key cheating on them. That's like half of his relationships. So okay, I got questions now. I got okay. relate. I'm going down I know the I relationship. I got hella hole. off track. But no, no, there's no such thing as off track in this stupid podcast. It okay. just is what it is. All right. It's um, fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't. You know when you go on a podcast and there's this like everyone turns on and everyone's got to be fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't want to do. Let's just be people. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so you you you're a good looking dude. I'm all right. All right. I'm definitely better. Like when I was fatter and balder, it made sense. Now okay. I'm starting. I'm growing my hair out, and I'm kind of eating better, so I'm starting to get, like, a little more attention. Do like, you feel like it, it's more body than it is personality? Because I think women... It's a, it's a mix of both, because, like, at the end of the day, like, women are still visual, but they're not as visual as we are. Yeah, we're not goddamn so, like, men like it, we are. So, like, yeah. you know, if you click, you click at the end of the day. Like, it also, as a man, you got to have common sense. Mm-hmm. If you're... I don't think any of us go, go right up to a woman anyway. You kind of have, you like, a... That? You don't go right up. There, there may be like a two minute observation period, really, where you're trying to figure out your shit. Mm-hmm. You could kind of tell how like a woman moves, whether or not y'all really gonna fuck with each other like that. Please elaborate. What do you mean? It's it's just like certain, it's like certain vibrations. Like if I got some sage. Okay, good. We're going like to if we. <laughs> <laughs> I sage my room Hang just with them night. hippie girls. That's, now you sage and shit. What I, hey, <laughs> honestly, I, I'm so poor. Uh, you know, you when you, you know when you get to the point of desperation where you're like, you have some. I can see how people get into cults mm-hmm. where you're in a when you're in a headspace where you're like anything to get me out of whatever I'm. At this point, I'm like, yeah, give me the sage, <laughs> give me the spiritual. I'm gonna put salt in front of my door, whatever it takes. Salt in front of the door. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Whatever it takes to get to make sure I am a happy, healthy, successful individual. I'm gonna fucking do I it. I got salt for in front of the door. Take, got take my little, toxic women out. Just I got my, on door, step on the door. <laughs> I got my beads. I got uh-huh. my, 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 my crystal beads uh, for my, my wrists. I need my, some beads. I got, you got beads? You got yeah, some Black I Panther need, shit. I need some new beads. These beads worn out. I've been wearing the same beads to work again. Yeah, you got to change up your beads. I got to change up my bead game. Um, That's the, like, I'm not a change. Like, this is like a little small chain. I'm yeah. not... Or at the very least, I have to get like more form fitting shirts. I can't be like the big ass t shirt chain where yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, thirty. Yeah, Shit's gotta selling, change. Selling dope. I'm gonna start wearing hats. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but how she moves? Like you can you how feel she like moves. Okay. like put it simply like you can't put two like high level extroverts together. Okay. Because at that point you're just competing, and you can't put like two introverts together because. You, no, not even nothing's going to get done. Right. So, like, yin it, yang, so balance. Like, so, like, in that, res- but like, it, it goes on, like, to more than that. Like, I'm a goofy dude. I'll, I'll even say this. It's not, even, sometimes, a lot of times, not even observation. Like, for me, it's like the first, like, paragraph, like, introduction. 
hey, how are you? We talk for like 30 seconds. I could tell when she's not feeling it. And, okay. mo- and that's the problem. And I feel like that's a lot of things that men are kind of getting out of now. You could tell in the first like minute, minute and a half whether or not she's like feeling you. Yeah. The only thing is we're still kind of wearing off this shit we got from our father's generation where she's I got not daddy feeling you. Issues. No, not, not, not even that. It's like, okay, she's not feeling you. But you can make her feel you. Like, yeah, no, yeah. No, 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 you're not. And B, you're a grown ass man. You ain't got time for that shit. I know she's feeling you or she's not. Right. So, so your your feelings are. It seems like you're out of respect if you feel like pretty early on this just not. I'm not going to try to change her mind. Yeah, like out, you out of bare minimum basic human being. Hey, I'm not trying to ruin anybody's night. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, if I have tried to ruin somebody's night, I have been able to do that shit on purpose. Okay. <laughs> What? You know, man? I'm a petty motherfucker. Like, I think there was, like, I think the last time I really tried really hard, it was, like, this girl named Kelly, and me and her used to go back and forth all the time in high school, just capping on each other because we were both ugly at the time. <laughs> and, like, we had both kind of had a glow up. She had a harder glow up than I did. Mm-hmm. But, like, we still, I, like, I saw her at this bar, and we just had this, like, Back and forth. So I was like me and my homies, and I went on like this almost cartoonish escapade. Yeah. Just kind of cock blocker the whole night. Just kind of just indir- being a dick to be a dick. Just not even being a directly dick, just indirectly. I entertain people. I know how to distract motherfuckers when they're drunk mm. and just doing that shit. So, like, if she's just like have like conversation, I like do something like semi hilarious, like make yeah. a noise, and then his, he's like, <laughs> she's like, motherfuck you. Yeah. So, okay, okay, so, interesting. Okay, so what's your approach? Okay, let's say we're not talking Tinder, Bumble, or anything like yeah. that. You're 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 on the train, which... I know. N- no? Absolutely. That, that's a whole other thing. There are some places you just don't talk to women, I think unless, you're, unless you're like an eight or above. I think we're very different people. We're in, very... In our, yeah, nigga, look at you. You look like a damn genie. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up in here... Dreads and shit half the time you got your shirt off. I don't hug around true. you before. I very rarely have. I'm, I'm, you can you you can like you can exert a certain amount of security approaching a woman on the train. I am not a public transportation ass nigga. I'm still I'm still in the mind frame like hey, you can surpass that. I'm still in the mode like hey, she was trying to get from A to B. It's not the time or the place. Let well, it go. I'm, like I'm I'm very much a we're both in an establishment kind of guy like laugh factory cool bar cool okay not even work really like there's only yeah, like work there, 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 there's only like two occasions where like i've shot my shot with a bartender and i didn't even do it there i just got her information before i left and we and we had established a rapport or a what's the word not extended rapport a substantial rapport over mm. the course of the night. Like, if she's like, let me have free shots. I think she's attractive. Okay, cool. I'm gonna get her. I could get her contact information. But I'm not just gonna like do that lame ass shit. Like, write my number on a fucking receipt of like uh-huh. a bar tab or something like that. I think that's gonna work. She gets that 50 million times a day. And it's rude on women to hit on. It's rude to hit on women at work because power dynamics. Blah 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 blah. I okay. But you can surpass that because you're Shazam too. Because <laughs> I am. Like Shazam. Shazam. You never seen that Shaq movie? I remember the Shaq, Shaq you probably, movie. You probably can't hoop. But you never seen this. <laughs> I when you say I'm a fucking genie, what like like because I don't. You, you like. I'm gonna get even, some water for you. I'm listening. Like even though I got that white show in the corner of my mouth. Or <laughs> About the A bug. Yeah, you get one of the regular Negro bugs. I got the A bug. You gonna give me a nigga bug? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, go ahead. What's what Like it's what what was I talking about again? Um, I'm a genie. What do you mean? Oh, a genie, just like you would like, even though you're clearly black, there's still there's still some element I think it's because you're black and from California, women see you would think you're exotic. I, mean, I don't go off the especially, top. Especially Midwestern women. That's okay. I don't go off the top. Okay. Are you saying they can pick and up? Every and every dude has like their own like energy. You have exotic energy. <laughs> I have. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. What type of energy do you have? I have something I've come to realize. Like I have strong like he won't leave energy. Okay. I will. But <laughs> they have. They it have, comes like, off. It comes off like, you know, hey, goofy, glasses, 
like well, do cleans you- cleans up decent, but he doesn't dress the best. Like I'm the dude. All right, okay. You date after the nigga you really won't fuck up. <laughs> That's come on, man. You got to have more self esteem than that. It's not a it's not a self esteem thing. Like I like I like I know I'm a decently well put together brother, but like it's and I'm not saying I'm not saying it's like that with every woman. Okay, I'm saying like if. Are we becoming like, fresh and fit? What are we doing? No, absolutely <laughs> not, nigga. Absolutely not. But like, if you, like, th- there'll be a rare couple times where you'll see me out with a girl. You'll be like, "How the fuck you land that shit?" It's because she think I won't leave, and I'm going to in a week. Like, you understand? Well, okay. Wait. All right, let me. I gotta write shit down here because uh, we're, we're 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 cooking with gas. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so to start off with the whole dress, what like I dress like shit. I That's like, the exotic thing. <laughs> what? So if you dress exactly how I dress, it won't work for me. Why? Because like it's again, it's different energies. I have to look like I'm somewhat put together to at least put on the air. That I have my shit together. You're kind of exotic. You can have the whole like, you can have the whole West Coast Tarzan thing if you really wanted to. Un- <laughs> un- undo the hair tie. <laughs> I would need nipple piercings for sure. <laughs> like, like you, you keep on. One of these girls will ask you to put on a loincloth. <laughs> all right, all right, I, all right. I'm think, I, there's a there's a um a kind of a hippie flow about me. That, that's exactly what it is. Okay, so In a less it, exaggerated it, way. Yes. It is disarming. Yes. Okay. So, okay. like, yeah. It, actually, yeah. You put it better words than I did. Like, it's disarming. It comes off as friendly. Like, little do they know, baby. Little, <laughs> little no. do they know. <laughs> but, but, but that's the other side of my coin. Why I told you that I look like that. You know, I like I look respectful. I look nice. But yeah. on the other hand, if I'm going around just like approaching women at random on the street at nighttime, I could also give off like intimidating. Hug the bunny till it dies of suffocation vibes. Mm, like, you know what I mean? Mm, needy. Exactly. Okay. And needy is very dangerous. That's fair. Okay, I'll give you that. So, in okay, outside of their perception, do you think you're needy? To a degree. To a degree to the point where I actively have to put a cap on. Because, like, there's, there's a woman I really like right now. I feel like I've told you about her, like, mm. a couple times. But, like... And we have a very close relationship, Mm -hmm. but because of that, but because we're that close and I do have feelings for her ultimately, Mm -hmm. I have to put a cap on it and say, hey, I have to remind myself like multiple times throughout the month, hey, she is not your girl. Mm. Even though we could be the kind of regular base, I go to her for a lot of shit, da, 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 da. I have to put a cap on it and say, hey, that's not your girl. Do you think she's aware that you're doing that? I mean, I don't know, probably, but that's not her concern right now because I'm not her man. Fair so, enough. like, we it, – it's not like a matter like she lives right, right down the street either. We're both from Michigan. She comes to Chicago sometimes, but, like, she's based out of Baltimore right now. But that's just an example of <clears throat> I'm trying – as I get older, I try to become more aware of my behavior and how my be- – yeah, that's another thing. I'm also, like, very awkward too. So Samesies. So, like, if you put me in a room – with a bunch of people I'm trying to impress, I can come off as like either very repressive or I can come off like I'm trying too hard. And because of that, I can be kind of over aware of what I'm trying to do. When so, when you end up trying too hard, do you know it's happening or is it like a retrospect? Like you're in the shower I know and you're it's like, ha- God damn it. I know it's happening when the second joke doesn't land. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I That's interesting. I... Fuck, I got three questions right now. Yeah. Let's see. First is, have you ever done mushrooms? Um, I did a very small micro dose with my now ex-roommate. And I ca- actually I actually did a small micro dose twice. One, I did enough to, like, you know, we micro dose, you kind of get that, like, extra HD effect. But it's yeah. not really, like, that's what I did back in Michigan where I went a couple weeks ago. And um, I did them with my ex-roommate, like, in October. I think Halloween was coming up in October, and I didn't really feel anything until I woke up, and I was like, ah, there's something, but it's not really enough to make a difference. So I haven't really, like, done done mushrooms. You haven't done a trip. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have any history of, like, mental illness in your family? Or has anybody gone, gone schizophrenic or anything? Nothing recorded. <laughs> <laughs> they don't record a lot of us, our Nothing Negro recorded. history. We, this uh, is we, true. We, we, we got issues, like, a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, help. Uh, as, as soon as... 
as soon as my, I just got like a new decent job. Like as soon as my health insurance kicks in, like I'm going to therapy, figure yeah. some shit out. Especially like, you ever like look at your parents and you learn something new? <laughs> Every day. Like, I thought I got all my bullshit from my dad mm. and staying with my parents over like the first half of the pandemic, like that first like six months um, when I was in Michigan, me and my mom got in a fight because she swore she told me something. I'm like, you did not like verbally, you did not tell me this. And then she acknowledged that she didn't tell me and then said that I should have known anyway. Mm. And that's when I realized, oh, my God, that's some shit I would do. She's just like me. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and then I start like, watching. I'm like, yo, all, like, the goofy shit, all, like, how I think, how I process things. That's all my mom. And that's why I thought, like, we were able to relate more than me and my dad could because, like, some old mother son shit. Dad's mm. like the girls are enough. Like no, like personality wise, except I get all the asshole shit. I get all the asshole shit and maybe the play too much shit from my dad. Like mm. everything else, like <clears throat> the anxiety, how I think, how my brain gets from A to B. That's a hundred percent my mother. Mm-hmm. I uh, sorry, hold on a second. Writing. I okay. God damn it. Would what you, are you writing anyway? I'm right. I'm writing like what I want to ask you and say to you because like, uh, it's going like there's so many different questions I have. Like uh, they go write a novel on the older bikers. <laughs> every time, so, every time I do this podcast and I start writing, people look concerned, <laughs> like I'm analyzing them. Like new book by Aaron Chase, sipping tea with the devil. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm gonna give these notes to the government. Okay, would you would you ever do like a trip? Maybe like I always feel weird about hallucinogenics just because like um, I don't know what's in there, but I know it's not all good. Yeah, that's yes. And with my experience personally, uh, yeah, you're going to have to you're going to have it's going to shrooms don't let you um, run away from it. Yeah. So there's times when the way I look at it is if if you have a trip and everything's fun and glossy and you, you you didn't have a bad negative thought, you're probably on the right direction in life. Mm-hmm. If you have a trip where you had to, you learned, my most recent trip, I was the worst one I've ever had uh-huh. and the most I've ever learned. I mean, probably that makes sense to, sorry, there's like a, What's that? I'm looking at some ass outside the window. Oh. <laughs> but um, that's, that, that's why I'm kind of avoiding them because like everything I love, mm. I have anxiety about. From like people to comedy, like I'm, I'm very <clears throat> even my living situation. I'm very blessed mm-hmm. as to where I am right now. But I'm also, I was just telling because Matt Brown came over. I was telling him the other day. Um, I'm very aware that this shit is temporary. Like because like life I'm at, is temporary or no 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 just like my living situation okay. because like ultimately I am in subsidized housing. Um, haters gonna call it Section Eight, but um, sub, but it's subsidized housing, and like because of that, I have this thing in my head like, okay, these white folks could take this shit at any time, mm-hmm. so I don't want to. So just because I'm in a good situation right now where I don't have to pay as much, I don't want to stay in that situation because that's how you get kicked out of your shit. Mm. So like, I feel like I'm on the clock. It was like, it's a year lease. So it's like, okay, I have by like the end of this next lease to at least be on the path somewhere. You got to figure some shit out. You got to do this, this, and this. But uh, I, um, you said something that came out. You said when you, like, let's say we're at the Laugh Factory, right? And you start to feel like you're, you start to feel like, oh, I'm in, not suck up mode, but like. Um, I, I'm trying too hard. Trying too hard. Let's yeah, yeah too hard. Try, uh, try mm-hmm. hard. Try hard. Yeah. You realize it's happening after the second joke doesn't land. Yeah. And then what happens? If then I think then usually I have the common sense to just kind of like get a drink, hang back, and let everybody else talk. So you look at the interaction kind of like a not a game, but like a, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's so interesting. That's so interesting. So what it, it has to be math, like I don't. And again, this is it a self esteem thing okay like i have i have people that love me obviously mm-hmm. but i also realize that like i don't have that nugget where i'm gonna be i'm gonna be that likable unlike the first impression 
But I, I kind I kind of have to be the guy that kind of hangs around a little bit. Maybe he covers a shit for you. Maybe you saw him have a good set. Then you're like, oh, that's Christian Royce. You know what I mean? Yeah. I well, I think that's only because of the try. Like, right now, you don't seem try hard at all. You're super dialed Yeah, it's because I know you. But you <laughs> <laughs> right, fair. But but you, I mean, to my, my memory of it, you know, for some context of all of the listeners, let's go back to how we kind of met. I really want to. How we met also helps, too. The fact. Go ahead, tell the story. Okay. So I knew KJ. How would you know KJ? KJ I knew K- KJ for like two weeks was the best comic I ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This dude. So you knew. How, uh, you nah, I t- think I could take him. No. <laughs> you, so you, you met him in the comedy scene in Detroit. Yes. Okay. And then how close were you to him? Like he. KJ was cool because we were never really that close. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he, but he, he was a dude, if I had a question, he would answer it. Mm. And he was also like kind of my first example. Cause like when you're, I didn't, I didn't start off like in Detroit. I started off like, again, one of the whitest cities in America, like Ann Arbor. I'm just now starting to do this shit. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I'm still not that confident around black audiences now, but like back in the day, it was zero zilch nada. Yeah. So when you... So he was part of like that first example of like, okay, here's like a black comic that's like not Chris Rock, not in the mainstream, da da da, da mm. that you can like look at and like kind of gain a footing of like or like kind of like a one oh one oh one on what you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do, how you perform in front of black audiences, how you perform in front of white audiences, and that kind of thing. Mm. So I don't want to call it a mentorship, but like it was kind of like a good outline, a good starting outline okay. for like someone who's just starting. So when I met KJ, before he had said anything, I was just, I was watching him watch things. You know, he kind of, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. he, he reminds me of the, uh, in the Jungle Book, you know, the, the Black Panther, the just kind of just looking at shit real, real, real slow. Yeah. Um, I thought <laughs> my very, very, very first thought was like, this nigga probably stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then he went on stage and started talking. I was like, "Oh, he, he, yeah, that was a mis- that was a misstep." Uh, I no longer feel that way. And pretty early on, I basically forced him to be my mentor. Uh, uh-huh. I, was, I was like, "You're gonna, you're gonna teach me all the things." Uh-huh. And so we got pretty close over time. And then when I decided to, I wanted to move out here, and I was gonna visit, I was like, "Who can I hit up?" And he said, uh, uh, "Christian Royce." Uh, I was like, okay, who's that? And, and we found your little uh, Instagram. And I you messaged found your little you. Instagram. Yep. <laughs> I found you on Instagram, and I think I followed you, and I messaged you, and you didn't say. It. I think you saw it too. You like, s- looked. <laughs> you didn't say anything. Cause I kind of have to get better about this thing. Like I'm very antisocial by nature. Okay. So like, if I. Like, I don't care who you are in comedy. If you, like, been in it for more than, like, eight months, you got a whole bunch of, like, randos. Hmm. Like, fuck it, like, hey, man, like, any chance you, like, put me on this show? Da, da. It's like, I'm not a good producer. Like, I produce shows. I'm not a good one. So hmm. it's just like, hey, well, like, hey, man, here's a demo. I'm like, yuck. <laughs> I don't know what I said to you, though. I said I was visiting I or something. I, I remember. I don't think I even read it. It was just like, who... Because, like, I, I think you're, like, the third message that week. It's kind of like, hey, yeah. I know so-and-so that, like, you didn't really hang around with that much anyway. Um, you think we can, like, you think you could take some time out of your day? How about, like, ah, I want to I chill. <laughs> so then we were outside the Lincoln Lodge. I was here for, I think it was maybe the first couple weeks. I don't know. Uh-huh. I don't know. How, how did it? How did, how did we it? met, I think, uh, honestly, I think you were, like, maybe one of, like, Three other black people that night, mm. and I think I saw you doing well. And I was just kind of like, "Hey, man, let's hang out." And then it was revealed, like, "Yeah, I hit you up on Instagram, <laughs> nigga, <laughs> months ago." <laughs> um, was it even at Legal Lodge? Did we just end up at Legal Lodge? I think we were somewhere else before. Yeah. Well, regardless. Yeah. Um, you you never, at least around me, you you never seemed all that try hard. I've seen, I know what you're talking about, and I, I keep picturing the Laugh Factory. It it seems that like it happens when there's a lot of a lot more going on. There's a lot more going on, and there's a chance that I may have had a good set. Mm. And like, if I have a good set, I have this weird delusion that I'm that nigga is gonna last <laughs> like six hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you seem you don't seem try hard at all right now. Is there a way to click into that when you're in around other? I people? mean, ultimately, it just comes down to nervousness. Like the people I'm most nervous around are like women that I think are attractive. Okay. Women that I think talk a lot. Okay, scratch that. White women that I think talk a lot. You wait. And why are you nervous around white women that talk a lot? Because you don't know when you're gonna slip and say some shit. And then all of a sudden you're on like some female comics message board. You don't even know what you did. You know what I mean? Okay. So you're right, afraid of saying like that. That stuff. like that, that's that's why I prefer. Even though I definitely have like my white woman friends. Yeah. I definitely prefer the company of like black and brown women just because like safety. If you exactly if you like st- like you can't go all the way out of bounds, but if you step out of line, they'll just like correct you right then and there for the most part. If there's like, like there, uh, there, there's there's no there's no slick shit you really got to worry about. Right. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. I yeah <laughs> yes on a very personal level I know mm-hmm. what you mean. Um, Going back to because we were gonna talk about my whole Me Too incident. Oh yeah, go ahead, so, out yourself. <laughs> Make that decision. So it, it's not out. Trust me. A, okay. I've been through this this same incident, and by, by this by this same incident, I mean like literally the same girl about the same story. Is mm. I've gone through some bullshit about it like three times already. Okay. So I'm strapped in. Um, I fell for a bad sublease in Chicago. I ended up moving back to Michigan, and uh, this dude named Louis D. Michael runs like probably. Or he used to. He moved now. But he used to run, like, the best house show in the state of Michigan. It was fucking great. And so he hit me up. He was like, hey, I heard about what happened. Come through, do a set. We'll get a bucket, pass it around, try to get some money for you. And so it gets to the point um, towards the end of the night. It's always, like, a big party afterwards. Everybody drinking or whatever. I have realized I've drank it too much, so I was just planning on sleeping on uh, Louis' couch in the night. And um, so there was this girl there named Ashley Stoneman. And she was, she she was like, you, you get a lot of these, you get like a lot more of these once you go out to like the suburbs and shit, where it's like they're in the comedy scene, but whether or not they actually do comedy is debatable. Hmm. Like a lot of times they just kind of like once a hang week. out and like maybe they'll do like some shitty bar show where it's like, oh, I haven't booked them yet, that kind of thing. Hmm. But she has spread this whole thing around that. And this was like back when like Hannibal first like got on. She was she spent this whole thing like, oh, I fucked Hannibal Burris, and um, it was it was like when Hannibal just like kind of like started like getting on, and to like a suburban motherfucker, it was like the biggest deal of all time. Like, oh shit, I didn't have any tact. So I and like no one. No, no one else was, like, around that. Like, I knew it was, just, like, mostly Louis' friends. I started getting anxious. I'm like, I kind of know her. And so I'm drunk. So I'm like, hey, so I heard you met Hannibal Burris. And she just starts going to, like, the whole story. We kind of hang out. Um, It was, like, nothing, like, really, like, too close for the most part. I'm just kind of, you, you know, like, we just kind of latch on to somebody at a party because you don't want to be alone. <laughs> that kind of thing. So she kind of, so I was kind of latching on to her. She went home. Nothing really happened. I passed down on the couch, and that was that. And then a couple months after that, Harvey Weinstein happened. <laughs> oh, okay. Harvey Weinstein happened. You know how you were like how like if you were like a if you were like a male comic who like thought he had some level of empathy, you were like just kind of in your feelings about like the shit. Like, oh man, I'm a monster. I'm a terrible person. Blah, 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 blah. And so. I went on Facebook on a soapbox full of shit, <laughs> and I you was typed your feelings on Facebook. Exactly. Okay. Especially like I had just met somebody at a thing, and we just hit it off. So I'm like, yeah, man, Michigan comedy needs more women in the scene, man. You know, okay. blah blah blah. I did that shit, and so because Michigan comedy is Michigan comedy, everybody went on the post like, yeah, well, man, a creepy, blah, 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 like uh, what they were gonna do, and uh, so Ashley, huh? your comment is pro women. My comment was pro, yeah, cause okay. like, cause like drama gonna do what drama gonna do. Okay. So you know you post a positive shit, they go come back with well blah 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 negative, which calling attention to it like yeah like you know some shit needed to be fixed. That was half of my post was about anyway. So then Ashley came up. Ashley's the girl. Yeah, Ashley oh. came up with my post. He was like, "Well, you're creeping around me the whole time at the party. You're not making it any easier." And I'm like, "White girl." I thought she was a Tita, but it turns out she was white. Okay. Like, 
Okay. <laughs> that was like that was always like weird to me. Anyway, and so ter- yeah, she was white. Okay. And um, taking this in. Okay. Yeah, and so it was like this whole thing. I tried to like just kind of gently take the L, like, hey, that wasn't my intent. I'll be more of my, aware of my behavior in the future. Mm. She referred to that as a fake ass apology, and um, it got to the point where one of my other friends, Miles, she DM me like, dude. Like, and this is like the shitty part, too. She was like, dude, I know you really didn't do anything, but like, all you could do is delete the post. So I'm like, right. nigga, you could say something, but okay, sure, whatever, fine. Mm-hmm. And that's, and that's why, and that's another reason why I don't really hang around white women. Like, I would not be able, at very least in Michigan, I wouldn't be able to do comedy if it weren't for black women. Mm-hmm. Because with everyone else, I remember it was like a three day period where I was like the center. I was pretty much the Louis C.K. of the comedy scene for like a hot minute until not like a hot minute, like two two and a half days. And uh, she went into like the women's comedy group in Michigan, kind of like on her campaign against me, like she usually did. Everybody's like, "Boo, Christian Rice, blah." And Heather J. Like, I don't know who Heather J. Is. If you stayed out at Cali longer, you would have. She had just moved out there. She's running a room out in Laugh Factory, Long Beach, right now. I think she's running the Chocolate Sundays out there. Gotcha. She's great. One of my mentors. And um, she's the only one that asked, what did he do? Mm. And, like, she at first she got real defensive about it. She was all like, how dare you ask me? You expect me to just, like, reveal it? She's like, no, 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 no. What did he do? Mm. And that's what got the train rolling in the sense that, like, she couldn't really answer on the post. All the other producers that took me off of shows, they, like, started to compare stories that, like, they weren't, like, lining up. Blah, 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 blah. One, she told one producer that I touched her, which I did not. Mm-hmm. And... That was pretty much the end of that shit. And so, with that, okay, I know I was going to tell the Me Too story, but what was the point of me telling that story again? Go we back, were, go back, <laughs> to, go, go back, go back to your notes. My go notes. <laughs> let me, my, my, uh, let me just go back to the notes. We we're essentially talking about your feelings about talking to women. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Relationships. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's the main reason why I just have that anxiety, especially with regards to white women, because yeah. especially. I ain't gonna say that shit. But like, <laughs> you want me to jump in and be tag in and talk no, about no, it? No, 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 no. I'm gonna change it up. But like, just because, again, like, ever since that incident, like, it's still a very jarring. I don't want to. I don't want to take it as far as say it's like traumatic. It probably could be, but I don't want to use no, that. That's I don't want to use that language. I think it's traumatic, but whatever. But like, when you have your business put out there like that, and everybody's like calling you a creep and shit, and you already. Like, I'm just now starting to, like, get, like, my self-image together. You already have somewhat of a shitty self-image. Like, that kind of ruins your trust level a little bit. Ever since then, you get asked, like, oh, great, now I'm that guy. You get asked any women I've been out with, bro. <laughs> like, you get asked, like, most, especially, like, most women around here that, like, I've, that's been around me for, like, 20 minutes. I'm very, like, there's a, there's a, there's a couple of times where I was, like, Hey, like, I've apologized for some shit I said last night. They're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, that yeah. kind of thing. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. yeah uh, trigger happy. Almost yeah. almost like just skittish mm-hmm. at this point. I get it. So, okay. So, you, uh, I'm going to put it in my own words. Uh, you feel like talking to women, this, being yourself is difficult to do when you're nervous. Yes. One of the times when you're nervous is when you're talking to women, especially in a romantic way. Not even... I don't want to say in a romantic way. Like, if I've already crossed that border okay. where it's like, hey, I'm into you, they're reciprocated, it's definitely easier. Okay. It's definitely more of like a social thing. I, I, I'll, I'll give you this. Like going up, getting up to the romantic part is the most awkward thing. But like once like we're already in a conversation, like man, ain't really no thing. Like okay. at that rate, I have common sense. I'm not going to. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I like you. Okay, cool. Send me a picture of your butthole. Like, that's not. <laughs> I, I hope not. Okay, so what do you want? Do you want, like, a girlfriend? Hook up? Friends? What do you, what do you... I want to. I want a girlfriend right now because, like, we're both 30. What are you, like, 32? 31. 31. Like, we're, we're both kind of at the age where if you're dating, you're kind of looking for, like, an end goal. It's one thing to do it. It's one thing to do it in your twenties. It's like, oh, we're dating. This is guy like I'm thirty. It's like, okay, I'm semi. This is kind of the age where people usually start like building a family. So it's like in my head, it's like, 
if I if I'm gonna like date someone, if I'm like pursuing a commitment, then like I want to make sure I could build something. You can't really build anything with no blocks. I hope to have some blocks soon, but I, I ain't got no blocks right now to build anything. Perfect world. What do you want? Perfect. Wor- Look, nigga, I'm being a fuck boy right now. I, okay, <laughs> yeah. No, if, if, if you just want to have, uh, that's ulti- like ultimately, like I'm just in a place. I know, like I may not, I may not be able to get that all the time, but like I'm in a place where, hey, if I could like have like decent sex like once or twice a month, I'm like good. But okay. like I'm not like a, re- a, 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 a relationship is unrealistic for me right now because. If I'm dating a woman my age, like, what is it leading to? Again, I don't have any blocks right now. If hmm. I, like, if I get my shit together and I do get some blocks, I'm like, yeah, I'll be more than happy. I have a couple of people in mind for that right now. I'm just not wasting my time blowing up their inbox because, again, I don't have any blocks. <laughs> but, like, I'm not, but, like, I'm too grown to be, like, wasting people's time and put on airs, like, I have future plan for them when I really don't. Mm-hmm. You know okay. what I mean? That's at the end of the day, that's disrespectful in itself. I get you. Okay, so it sounds like with the with the girls thing, you're you're not doing bad. I'm not doing bad. You I'm made it sound. Still, you before you were talking about yourself it, it, like a troll. It, like, it, 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 it sounds bad because you're pretty, and it, <laughs> it sounds bad to you. But like it's up, sometimes, like sometimes the truth ain't got no glitter on it. You know what I mean? All like right. like you don't. Know, it's not sad. It's just because, like, I know what kind of women I I know what kind of women I attract. Okay. I know what kind of women I can at least entertain for a while, and then I have like, and then I also know what I bring to the table. I also know what I need to improve on. Yeah. So, like, in order to get to all that, you have to have a certain dose of reality about your shit. Just kind of like, hey, here's what I bring to the table. Here's what I don't bring to the table. I know that I'm a good person. I know I'm a great person to be around. And I also know that I'm not for everybody. Okay. That's fair. All right. And that's just being realistic. That's fair. So then translating that same type of confidence and self-awareness into like being around groups of comics at the Laugh Factory, does that, why, why does that not translate the same? It translates in a very similar fashion. Like I, I have, I know a couple comics that like I just don't talk to because like every time. It gets weird afterwards. It's not even weird. It's just like I like I don't I give the same energy that most people give to me. There's like a couple people. Hell, we all fucking laugh at your staff. That's just like every time like I speak to them when they speak to me, it sounds like they're doing me a favor. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I've just stopped entertaining that. It was like, no, you got you know, you got to fuck with so. So no, I don't <laughs> like I like I know like I put I put my best foot forward with them. For some reason, they feel like our our energies don't match. Okay, cool. Most I'll give is a what up, and then I bounce. It used to be I'll feel that energy. I'll get upset about that. And then I'm like, nah, boss up me right now. Why you have to like this, this, and this? But when you when you get older, it's like, okay, that energy is not worth it. Mm-hmm. So it's a very similar it's very similar energy. At the end of the day, it's just social. I'm just after different things. Mm-hmm. Like... With, like, comics, I'm after a certain amount of camaraderie, like, hey, maybe book me on your show. When it comes to, like, women that aren't A, B, and C, it's just kind of like, oh, you know, I, I, I'm, 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 a piece, I'm a piece of shit straight dude that wants to see you naked. Are you down with that? No? Okay, cool. I'll leave you alone forever. That kind of thing. So, okay. So now I, I we're really we're really peeling into the layers, getting to know the real. I Christian told you I haven't gone to therapy yet. This is a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, it's a mistake that you have to live with now. Damn you. Um, okay, so I get your perspective of yourself in terms of relationship with women. I get your perspective of yourself uh, in the, the social aspect of stand-up. How do, you, how do you view yourself as a comic in terms of your skill? How do you rate As yourself? a comic, my biggest fault is that and like I'm not saying I'm not I'm not even not writing. I'm saying I just don't write enough. Mm. If I could like get like a routine, I have like my process down. I could be, I could be fucking like great. I still think I'm as far as like talent and like comparison to what other people could do in the scene. I definitely think I'm like talent. I'm upper middle. There's like a good number. There's. Most people I could definitely hang with, and then there's like a upper crust that like 
I can like, you know, at least like hone my own with or like I ain't touching them at all. Mm. Mo good, I'm not touching. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, but like so and so here. I can hang, I can I can hang on a show with them. Like they're not gonna fucking like demolish me. I can like sol- I can like be a solid opener for them mm-hmm. and I won't ruin the show. That's good. But like a lot of these other motherfuckers and you uh, most comics are paid like this. You'll be seeing other people on lineup is like, how the fuck they get booked before me? That kind of shit. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So I'm definitely more confident as a comic than a person. The lights definitely help. But <laughs> like I'm definitely more confident as a comic than just I feel like that's a lot of us. That's that's probably the right. That's probably why most of us straight up do it is because we feel, or at least that's why I do it. it you feel confident outside of yourself. Like the best analogy in the dorkiest analogy that I have is um, if you read Spider Man comics, Peter Parker is a vastly different person when he puts on the mask. Yeah. He's a vastly different person. That's why he keeps going back to his Spider-Man. Being Spider-Man actively ruins his life, his relationships. He can't keep a steady job, this or this and that. But he goes back to it because ultimately that's like the thing that makes him happy. He's web swinging, knocking out motherfuckers. It's an addiction. Fighting space aliens and shit. Like being a, being a comedian is probably like the best adventure I've ever had. I've like I'm going around, I'm meet people, I'm have access to places I wouldn't I wouldn't otherwise have access to. Mm-hmm. Like I have the option if I want to, I can go to a place where I can laugh my ass off and damn near drink for free. That's privilege in itself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like at the end of the day and then sometimes I contribute to it. Like I, like I was on like I was on the late show last weekend and like I was just kind of it was like a particularly good set because like the the because like the crowd was involved like in a good way it was like a decent about like crowd work while I like back and forth like there's like when the crowd's having fun then when like everybody's having fun so like when you're in that state it's like euphoric you know what I mean mm-hmm. so I wouldn't leave that for anybody. That's why, like, okay, like, I may not have a relationship right now, but, like, that's fine. Because, like, ultimately, if I leave any resemblance of this just so I can hook up someone and, like, make a baby just so they can have, like, the same, like, average-ass life on a dying planet, what's the point? You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to figure my shit out before I drag someone else into it so we can make a carbon copy of ourselves for saying make a carbon copy. Do you feel like most people in the scene or the people that you interact with know this side of you? The the depth. No, I'm shut off as fuck. <laughs> so what's going on today? What makes you? Because you're you're very open. A, I know you. Like we broke bread with each other before. Yeah. So like, B, I smoked a tad bit. C, um, just a tad. C, you got to remember, I don't like most people, Ooh. and that kind of goes for comics. So, like I have like a half. There's like a quick dozen. Whoever I'm hugging in the Leaky Lodge, that's who I fuck with. Oh, if I'm hugging you all the time, I fuck with you. Okay. But like, there's still like that good percentage that like, okay, yeah, if they're around, I'm not going to be as open because I don't feel comfortable around them. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. I Yeah. Especially in taking, taking this break, uh, this little break that I've had and then coming back, be... You good? <laughs> I heard that. He was like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, stop choking yourself out over yeah, there. Sorry. Stop choking yourself um, What was I saying? In coming back, in coming back to it, like, have you ever taken a break and you come back and you're like, it, it changes your perspective of a thing? I probably should, but there's also part of me that's kind of scared. Like, I took a week off one time and I hated that shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and like now it's not even like weeks off. It'll just be like I'll I'll just like take like a couple days off from like open mics. I feel guilty for not going to like mics because like even though I said that um, even though I said that most open mics aren't worth your time, there's still like we're still like in a place where if you know where to go, you can go to like somewhere with the audience every day of the week if right. you know where to go. So like. I'll take a I'll take a day off. I'm think and my excuse like oh I haven't written anything new yet and it's like that's not enough. You still have to like practice your form and all that other shit. Mm-hmm. Cause it, cause at the end of the, at the end of the day I'm still not getting up like that. Right. Like I still 
my average number of shows aren't that high. I'm not a scene darling or anything. When I go up eight times out of ten, I do great. But, like, I'm still not, I'm not, like, socially, which goes back to me being shut off. <laughs> but, like, I'm still not um, in the circle of the people you need to know. I'm not in good graces with the people I need. Like, I know them. But, like, oh, wow. that's just, like, Why but, you- like that's just Christian Royce. That's not, like, you know, oh, shit, I need to put Christian Royce on this show immediately. Why do you feel like you're not in good graces? Good grace is kind of a strong term. Oh, I just okay. Feel that like made it sound very... I, I'm, I'm not the first person someone comes to mind gotcha. when they have a new show or when they need to get these bookies. I still have to send mad emails to get anything done. Okay, okay. I get what you're saying. And my ego doesn't accept that. Uh, <laughs> also get what you're saying there, 100%. Um, but in coming back and being in the open mic um, energy again, I realize it's stressful. Like there's something really uncomfortable around about being at the open mic because there is this. Um, what's it? You, you don't ever, want to bomb after somebody that did good. You don't want to. Yeah, there's this con. There's this feeling of pick me, pick me, pick me. I want to be the person. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm sure I add to that energy because I'm also there signing up for the mic. But it's not an energy that's fun to be around. I get that. That's why. That's part of the reason that cut you off. I'm sorry. Oh, well, the other thing I was gonna say is why I've been going to uh, music mics, mm, where really? I I really fuck with musicians. Like I play music. Um, I don't know if you know that, but I play bass and I rap a little bit. And being around musicians is, is so like they are. They also have a quirkiness about them that comics have. But there's something. It's a different channel mm-hmm. you know like there's no there's no um what is that when you get the frequency when you put the mic too close to the the oh feedback, feedback. there's no like an energy feedback when it comes to being around musicians it just feels easier um now i'm rambling where we i don't say? know like maybe actual musician i don't want to Eh, fuck it i'll say it all right maybe around actual musicians but like if you're i'm come from a culture because i used to rap too i think i told you that right yeah you made it i'm actually i'm um, doing like ha- a half comedy half music kind of mixtape that i'm working on but it has like a narrative but um it, it's a, i'll probably tell you later but um i come from a culture where you just kind of hang around a bunch of rappers rappers are pettier than comedians like <laughs> comedians are still petty but rappers are some of the most pettiest bitches you'll ever meet in your life like <laughs> there's something special Something special, and like they, they're like all ego. Uh, it's not a good if you're trying to progress, it's not a good culture to be in. Mm. Like, you kind of have to know if, if you're a rapper, you have to know you have to know people trying to like build, trying to like build a label and do the business side of things. You can't just be a rapper that knows other rappers because at that point, that's just crabs in a barrel. Mm-hmm. So, I kind of maybe I kind maybe I should try to do music mics. I've never been like a fan of music mics in the sense that like I never liked. I think it goes back to rappers again because I think all the other music mics I've done it was just like mostly rappers. It's like people like turn up like hey that like, comes like all right guys settle down. Um, we're gonna talk about my penis for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think like I think that's part of the fun of it is is if you know how to ride the, if you can can be if you can be the uh, uh, um what's the word. A bright spot in something that everyone else is. Am I making sense? No, you're making sense, but I feel like <laughs> the bright spot, like it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a music mic. Do you know how bad you have to be to be booed at like a Should music you get booed mic? At music mic. That's what I'm saying. So like, uh, oh so like, God. it's different from like comedy mics where, like, you know, you have like seven of the same white dude. Yeah. Going up and like, what is that? <laughs> Dude, like for real? Can I like, my God, I've seen this basically the same guy. It's a culture thing. White people are fucking scary, and they're almost, they're almost a hive mind. Almost, I've learned this like just yeah. like selling weed and shit. Like, there's like at total, maybe like four main variations of a white dude. <laughs> And each four okay. has like five to seven different variations of that dude. So like, it looks like a lot, but like it's deceptively it, small. It, it, it's like if it's like it, it's like if you're a white person because white girls do this shit too. Like yeah. if it's like going to like Caucasian University and you could pick a major and a minor. So it's like 
I major in finance boss bitch, but I minored in goth in high school. Like, you know what I mean? Yes. Weirdly, I do. And it's, it's, I've been, yo, we were talking about this recently. Okay. Do white people have souls? I know what you mean by that, and I don't know. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I talk to, I ask other black people, and when I say that, it, I, that's not the right word. Because obviously, yes, they have a, you know what I'm, but like, I, it, it is, there's no word to describe that, like, do, what is, what is, there's something hot, there's something missing when I talk to them, and generally. I feel like it's because when you're, if we go back to, and I'm pulling all this out of my ass. Okay. <laughs> if you go back to like, what was like the golden era for white people? The 50s? It was right before oh. Negro started acting up. <laughs> like, um, yeah. like in the 50s, like where you take most of white culture is come from a place where. Exclusion the, the, of the, others. Not even exclusion. Well, exclusion of others is part of it. But like part of the whole, like in the 50s and the 60s, what the CIA was doing Oh, yeah. Most of their, most of their function was to take out anybody different. Like, look at black people, gay people, communists, fucking. Asian we didn't, we, we, yeah. we didn't, we didn't know Arabs existed until 1998. Yeah. Like that whole thing. So, like, when you, so when you take the other side of that, and white culture is to have the suburban house with the white picket fence and it's a straight and it's a structure of like the man puts on a tie and goes to work the women the woman is the homemaker little timmy goes to play on the soccer team um julia helps her mom around the house that has a baby doll because it's going to help her to raise children when you're just getting to a point of where your culture values some form of individuality I feel like it's not going to be there right away. You know what I mean? And like you only, and you don't really know how to truly express yourself. Because it's like white people, individual white people kind of come off as the same until you get to know them and they say some wild shit. It's like, okay, this is the real you. So that's why whenever you meet like a white person off rip, it's almost like they're putting on an air of who they're supposed to be. And then... You talk to him, it's like, oh, okay, this is how he's still kind of that guy, but you kind of get the nuances and shit. You get you get the aftertaste of a person of what a person really is. Yeah, and I'm talking completely out of my ass. No, I know <laughs> it's I don't have an answer for it either. But when I say, do they have souls? Anytime I say that to black people, they understand what I'm asking, mm-hmm. and it's it's it's. Like of course they have like you yeah, know some form of substance, but there's like there's yeah. something. It, it's it's we were okay. I was at a, a, a music store mm-hmm. looking for some equipment, trying to do a show, all this stuff. Yeah, and I'm there, and there's the there's these um, young young bucks, young white children. They looked about seventeen to nineteen. Yeah, and they were playing on the bass guitar. I'm mm-hmm. bass is my shit, yeah. and they're playing. And I was looking at them like, man, technically on a technical level, killing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, c- c- comedy, same thing. I see a lot of white male comics who, on a technical level, got it, man. Just, mm-hmm. But just nothing behind it. Like right. we're playing the same instrument, we're playing the same notes, and yet when I play or when I see black people play versus them, mm-hmm. there's a feeling that comes out of it. That right? Is, it's it's so hollow. It's like you're trying to. Comp- it's because I feel like there isn't like. I feel like they're missing that thing where it's like, okay, I'm up. It's just I'm up here and I'm performing. Right. That's why one thing about me, I feel like my stage presence is getting a lot better mm. because whenever, not to the point where I'm allowing heckling, fuck that shit, but like when, well, I'm on stage and I feel like there's a small amount of back and forth to the where as I'm developing a relationship with the audience instead of just me just like giving them shit. Yeah. That's when, um, that's why I feel like my stage presence is at its highest because now they know what I'm about. They're kind of in tune with my movements and they're actually paying attention. Mm. Like a lot of open micers, they do this shit where it's like, you know, the hand in their pocket kind of thing. Let me talk about my I, therapist. I wouldn't even say it's talk about, it's talk at. It's talk at, that's exactly what it is. So it's like, you say this, you're supposed to laugh now. Granted, it still takes a second for me to get to that place where it... Actually, now we have that parallel with um, 
how I talk to women like other comics, like it's going to take, no matter what, it's going to take me a second to kind of gain that level of comfort where I have that like relationship. I feel like I can speak freely. That's why I feel like I'm at my best when I'm performing, mm. but it's still going to take a second. Like, I feel like with uh, Caucasian performers, they don't really have that. It's just kind of like, this is me. I'm doing my bits. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's, that's where you're lacking the soul element. Any like, especially when we look at like music, like when you feel like you're touching an audience member, like Jimi Hendrix, you do that with a guitar, but like other MCs, da 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 da. Kanye kind of does it where he like sets up these like grand ass fucking mm. setups. Spectac- spectacles. Right. Yeah. And like he's almost like he's using the audience as like a tool almost, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which feeds his ego, which feeds him. So, art is that, weird. Art is weird. And you have uh, to be a weird person to make it. This is true. I um, I guess r- in wrapping up, mm-hmm. you know, was, was there any questions for me, Christian? Anything you're curious of? I mean, I was supposed to ask you questions. Like, no, no, I'm just you know changing it up. I don't ask another grown man questions in his house. <laughs> I, um, I, I, I don't know questions. Around the apartment. What season of Atlanta do you have on DVD right there? Is that season, season one? one? I need to get season two th- and three, but I have season one. Season two and three. Yeah, season one. That's. I, I, I like Atlanta right now, but season one is still peak Atlanta. I like I like Earn I like Earn the most when he's broke. That's why he didn't have a lot to do with season three. That's fair, mm-hmm. and I think I think I'm in season two area. I think that's where I'm. It, it's the sweet spot for me where season they're on th- the come up. I like that. Dog, like when. I I had never seen like. I never had another man's ass whooping bring me to tears before. <laughs> but when Ern got his ass whooped by fucking yeah. Troy, yeah. like I felt, you ever felt that shit? Is like that, like angry you can't really do shit. Where yeah. it's just like, okay, I have to fight you. I'll probably die, but I have to fight you. And they but, sit back in the car, and it's awkward as shit. Uh huh. Yeah. You yeah. just gotta sit there, your ass. That's the hardest thing a man can do. Yeah. It's like this close to like watching some dude fuck your girl. You are not a cuck. You are not into this shit. It's like second place. Like sitting in the car like two inches away from the nigga that whooped your ass. That's why niggas grow up wanting to fight their daddy. <laughs> and on that note, Christian Royce, thank you so much. I'm, okay, I'm going to stop. <laughs> All right. The end. <laughs>